Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday's House of Games. My name is Richard Osman. Welcome along all week. I'm joined by four famous faces. They are battling it out to win themselves a trophy. Our players this week are Lou Sanders, <laughs> the Reverend Richard Coles, Dr. Maggie Adderin Pocock, and Mr. Stuart McConey. So, Richard, yesterday's show you came second yes. to uh, Stuart McConey on the end there. Any tactics today to uh, win yourself a prize? Uh, trust I'm trying to answer more questions correctly. That is good thinking. Talking of answering more questions correctly, yes. Maggie. So, this is the buzzer That's you That's the say. buzzer. <laughs> oh, and you're meant to... Now, you ended up on zero yesterday, <laughs> but did. at one point you did have a point. <laughs> I know, I know, I got one. <laughs> and also, to be fair, you're a space scientist and brighter than the rest of us put together, so you don't have to score any points. <laughs> That's very kind. But... <laughs> Stuart. What a win yesterday. Very impressive. Yes. Good general knowledge, good buzzer speed. And you took home the House of Games smoking, smoking jacket. jacket. Beautiful piece of kit. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at the weekly leaderboard, shall we? This was yesterday. Stuart won, so he takes four points. Richard second, so it's three. Lou has two. Maggie has one. So smoking jacket for Stuart yesterday. Lou, shall we take a little look at the prizes on mm. offer? Here are Tuesday's mm. prizes. Ooh, there Lord. is oh. a pillow and duvet set. There are the House of Games salt and pepper shakers. Beer mats there. There's the Tide and the House of Games dartboard as well. The dartboard, it's, it's clear to me. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Shall we? Should we play Tuesday's House of Games? Very best of luck to everybody. Here we go. Your first round today is... <laughs> Correction Centre. I'm going to read you each a statement, but the statement is incorrect. But if you change one word in it, the statement becomes correct. Lou, here's your first fact. In 1982, the wreck of Axel Rose was raised and later put on display. So something rose. Uh, it's got to be the wreck of... Look at McCarthy. <laughs> yeah, no. really. uh, <laughs> look, look at all three of them. Oh, cool. The wreck of uh, something... What was the wreck of something rose? Uh, garden rose, train rose, something... <laughs> <laughs> This is bullying. <laughs> it's bullying in the workplace. It's I was a... <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to time you out. Fine. Though. I'm so sorry. Is that all right? <laughs> Richard oh. Coles wins oh. that race. Mary Rose. Mary Rose. <laughs> it's absolutely right. The record of Mary Rose was raised and put in display. Richard. Yes. I'm going to read you a statement now. Okay. You're going to change one word. Slurping, swirling, sniffing, checking out legs, tasting, and retronasal olfaction are all aspects of appreciating fine art. I'm going to change art to wine. Change art to wine. Got yourself a point. And I'll play Richard. Maggie. Oh, yeah. Here is yours. Oh, what would you like to change here? Okay. Though his real name is Robert Van Winkle, the rapper behind the hit Ice Ice Baby chose Vanilla Latte as his stage name. Latte, yes. See, I don't drink coffee, so I think I'm at a disadvantage. But I'd like to change latte to ice. Latte to ice. <laughs> well done, Vanilla <laughs> Ice. Robert Van Winkle. Stuart, here is your statement. Change one word, please, to make it true. Most children have 20 baby buggies by the time they reach the age of three. How about change buggies to teeth? If you change buggies to teeth, you're quite right. Absolutely. <laughs> Lou, back to you. Come on, where you want you to get this. A vengeful spirit haunts the dreams of teenagers in the classic horror film A Nightmare on Fleet Street. Fleet to Elm. Change Fleet to Elm. Is it A Nightmare on Elm Street? <laughs> of course it is. Point for Lou Sanders. Well done. <laughs> Reverend Richard, here is your second one. In 2007, DEFRA officially recognised the tremendous efforts made by the Cheeky Girls in keeping the country fed during wartime. I'm going to change Cheeky to Land. Is it the Land Girls, not the Cheeky Girls? <laughs> of course it was. Well done, the Land Girls. <laughs> Maggie, yes. here is your second one. Can you get yourself another point? On the 6th of May, 1954, Roger Bannister became the first person to run a mile in under four hours. I was going to say I could do that, but I'm not sure I could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, looking at it, I'd like to change the hours into... <laughs> I won't say nanoseconds, but I don't want to take my first answer. I'm going to change it into minutes. 
that it is in four minutes, under four minutes. Well done. Well done, Dennis there. <laughs> Stuart, to end the round, one last statement, one last word to change. Famed for his scenes of stylized violence, Quentin Blake's best-known works include Kill Bill and Reservoir Dogs. Looks pretty good to me. <laughs> um, I think we will change Blake to Tarantino. Is absolutely right, Quentin Tarantino. Well done, Stuart. The end of that first round. It's quite nice when it's not the buzz, is it? Everyone gets yes. a chance. Yeah, yeah we like it. Things it. Everyone calm down. <laughs> yes, exactly. We all Please. relax into it yeah. a little bit. Let's take a look at the scores at the end of round one. Lou, you have one point. Maggie and Stuart have two. Richard Coles, our current leader, on three points. Well played, Richard. <laughs> Should we do round two straight away? Yeah. Uh, today is going to be... All in the details. This is a team game, like always in round two, and as always, the person in last place gets to choose their partner. Lou, today it is you. Who would you like to go with? Stuart McKinney, please. Well, this is a, a theme developing Stuart, isn't there? Let's, uh, everyone chooses Stuart. <laughs> Lou and Maggie, if you would change places, please. We have Lou and Stu, and we have Maggie and Hello. Reverend Hello. Richard. OK, this is how we play this round. Before the round, uh, you all did a little bit of homework, and you did homework filling in some clues to something entertainment-related. What we're going to do now is read those clues to your partner, and your partner has to guess what the clues were for. Richard and Maggie, we will start with you. Richard, we asked Maggie to describe a performer. She filled in these clues as well as she could. So who is this performer, please? Maggie has filled in these clues for you. Her UK number one singles include, according to Maggie, some great songs. I think they really are. Some <laughs> great <laughs> songs. This is going to go well, I suspect, <laughs> this one. Richard, your next clue. She starred in a film alongside Handsome Bradley. OK. And her stage name was inspired by, according to Maggie, her baby daughter. I don't know, but I, my guess would be Lady Gaga. Maggie, is he right? He's right. He's yeah. right. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> that, you're still going to film like Handsome Bradley is a great clue. <laughs> yeah. Because his uh, star is born, right? With Bradley is. Cooper. You, you, oh, and yes. I have actually, it's the only film I saw last year. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. really? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And her stage name was inspired by Queen Radio Gaga yeah, and all sorts of number one paparazzi. <sighs> Telephone, all sorts of different things. Poker Face, of course, which, as you say, are great songs. <laughs> yeah. So, well done. I mean, kind of terrible clues, but also very good <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Lou Sanders. Yes. You know how to guess something that Stuart has given you some clues for. Okay. Stuart gave us three clues okay. that would lead you to a film. I don't know films. Well, That's this would be a lot of fun, then. It's one of my areas that's blank. <laughs> Is it? We're finding a lot of those, aren't we? <laughs> It's because I watch them and then I forget uh, everything about them about two days later. Okay. I, I Sometimes I watch a film that I've seen before and I've been like, oh, I've seen this, but have I still don't know what happens. Have you ever seen Memento? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Good a joke food. because yeah. he can't remember what happens or something. There you go. But shall, we, shall we just look at the clues I, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. see where they get us? So, Lou, what's this film? It's based on a book by, according to Stuart, Peter Benchley. Its main setting is a town called, according to Stuart, St Hyannisport. And its Oscar-winning score was composed by, according to Stuart, John Williams. Lou. I have no idea. It can't be Manchester in the Sea, because then it would be... In a town called Manchester by the Sea. You would think so, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just... Uh, that's the only film that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> so your answer's going to be Manchester by the Sea. Manchester by the Sea. Manchester by the Sea. Stuart, is that right? Uh, we don't hand it over, but would you get that? Yeah. It's Jaws. Jaws is the answer. Good clues as well. The two of them. Peter eventually wrote the book. Yeah. I'm um, so sorry. Absolutely right, right so about John sorry. Williams. It's main setting, Amity Island. Maggie, you now have something to guess. Richard is going to give you three clues. Rotten clues, Maggie, I'm sorry. That will lead you to a song. Let's take a look at your clues. The original music video features, according to Richard, Crayon, 
A cover version by, according to Richard, Slipknot topped the UK singles chart. Okay. I don't remember Slipknot topping the UK singles chart, but you could be right. <laughs> uh, and the lead vocalist on the original version is, according to Richard, Eric Bloodaxe. Yeah. I mean... Whoa. See, if we featured a crayon. Uh, cause, uh, um, some, yeah. yeah, some animations. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, when I think of animation, uh, I see, yeah, I think of a uh, Peter Gabriel, uh, things like Sledgehammer, but uh, nothing else ties in with that vaguely. And also, if it just... I am going to go out on a limb yes. and say, I think those bottom two clues might both be nonsense. OK. <laughs> <laughs> would, would, would I be unfair in thinking that? I think you'd be fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't think I'm right, but I'm going to go for uh, Peter Gabriel uh, Peter Sledgehammer. Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer. Yes, because uh, I, cause I like it. Is it Sledgehammer <laughs> by Peter Gabriel? It is not Sledgehammer by Peter mm. Gabriel, I'm afraid. Him, or does he decide? No, it's, 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 we can't, but if you have to have a guess, I would go off the crayon thing as well. Cray oh, the crayon see. thing gives me a slight hint. And is, you, is Richard's mind working some weird Scandinavian way about Eric Bodak? Oh, that's what I was wondering. Is it Take On Me by Aha? Uh -huh. I thought, is it Take On Me? <laughs> It Take is. on me by Aha. Uh -huh. But yeah. stupidly, I couldn't remember the name of the singer <laughs> and I had no idea who covered it. And I was misleading and I was <laughs> foolish and I apologise. I didn't even think Crayon was good to go on because it was all sketched, wasn't it? I think it's great. That would have led... A lot of people would have said it because it would have led people... Morton Harkett was the singer oh, uh, yeah. from Aha. Uh -huh. And you remember who the cover version was? Can no. A1, boy band A1, A1. was uh, oh, wow. the answer. <laughs> Stuart now has to guess something yeah. you've given us. I think okay. I've done all right in this one. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. That's good. Lou has given you three clues that lead to a TV programme. Here's your first one. It is set in the world of, according to Lou, the <laughs> government, dummy. <laughs> OK. Or just the government. I was just being fun with the dummy. <laughs> it has a film spin-off called, according to Lou, I don't know. Ah, uh, I didn't as well as I Yeah, no, this is... <laughs> it's better to be honest, right? <laughs> you can stop now if you like. And your final clue... <laughs> It first appeared on TV in, according to Lou, 2015. I guess. Um, I... The only thing that leaps to mind that's roughly the right period and is set in the world of government, and I think as a film spin-off, is The Thick of It. Lou? <laughs> yeah, it Brilliant. is The Thick of It. Well done. <laughs> well done. Um, it is set in the world of government, quite right, as a film spin-off called In The Loop, and it was... 2005, it first wow. appeared. That's... Oh. Yeah. Give or take. That. Give or take. <laughs> and that's the end of that round. Well done, everybody. Helping each other out. Lou and Maggie, if you swap places again, please. <laughs> that's the respect in the game that I like to see. <laughs> Let's take a look at the scores at the end of round two. Lou, you have two points. Maggie and Stuart, three points each. Our leader still, Reverend Richard Coles. Well done, Rev. <laughs> round three today is going to be... The backwards round. I'm going to read you out a series of questions now, but I'm going to read them out backwards. You also have to give me the answer backwards, backwards, please. So if you were the answer, you'd be Sanders Lou, for example. OK. You'd be the worst of all, I know, Maggie. Yes. You'd be Pocock, Adderin, Maggie, Doctor. <laughs> Is that right? That's a bit of a mouthful, yes. Yeah, there you go. Buzzers on fingers. Ready, everybody? Yeah. Luck good. Light northern, the forename scientific, the is what? Oh. Richard. Borealis Aurora. Borealis Aurora. Aurora Borealis. That's the right answer. Well played. <laughs> Question next. Song this of title the is what? <laughs> Lou. Me wasn't it. Is it me wasn't it? Let's have a little listen. Oh! <laughs> it wasn't me. Well done. Question next. Costner Kevin by Directed Was and starred Western 1990 which? Richard. Wolves with talking. Incorrect, oh. I'm afraid. Stuart. Wolves with dances. Well played. <laughs> Question next. Song this of title, the 
is what? <laughs> Good luck, Stuart. No right here, right. Is it now right here, right? It is indeed. Let's listen to it the right way around. Right here, right now, Fat Boy Slim. Question next. Song this of title the is what? Maggie, good luck. It's like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Have <laughs> girls. Oh, oh. Rich, I'm afraid, <laughs> Richard. Oh. Fun. Have to want just girls. Is the right answer. Well done. <laughs> fun has to want just girls. Girls just want to have fun. <laughs> Those are hard to do. Question final. The film Bond James, which in Scaramanga Francisco plays Lee Christopher. Richard. No doctor. Incorrect, oh. I'm afraid. Stuart. Oh. Gun, golden, the, with, man, the. Is the right answer, Stuart? Very well played. Gun, golden, the, with, man, the. Man with the golden gun. Shall we take a look at the scores at the end of oh, that don't round? I have to. <laughs> but the scoreboard is backwards now. <laughs> so, whoever's got one, oh. Uh, Lou, you have three. Maggie, you have three. We have joint leaders, Richard and Stewart, six points each. Battle is joined, gentlemen. <laughs> Round four on Tuesday's House of Games is. Size matters. Tablets out, please. I'm going to be like really good at this round. I'm going to give you some categories. Yeah. Okay? You just need to give me a correct answer. The person who gives me the longest answer in that category will win themselves a point. If you give me the longest possible answer in the category, I'll give you a bonus point as well. So write down the longest possible answer you can give me for this category first, please. So British group Brit Award winners. Oh. Lou, who have you gone for? I went for quite a few, crossed them out, and then I've gone with the polymonic spray. Uh, the polyphonic spree. The poly polyphonic spree. <laughs> that's a long name. Yeah, it's a long name. I, I yeah. thought Echo and the Bunnymen was my other one, but that's 18, and the polyphonic spree is 19. But Echo and the Bunnymen have the one advantage of being British. Uh, which, but that's I'm going with Echo and the Bunnymen, no, no, please. The polyphonic sp uh, spree. Uh, there's some British members in there. OK. <laughs> Probably. Uh, <laughs> let's put that up there, Lou. Polyphonic oh. spree. 18 for the polyphonic spree. Richard, who have you gone for? Oh, that's a good answer. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Oh, if that's, a, that's correct a good answer. answer. Yes, if it's yes. correct. If it's correct. Yes. And listen, they had like they had a couple of years where they were oh, massive. massive. That's a great, answer. great answer. Twenty. Twenty-two. <gasps> oh, that's good. That is good. That's good. Yes, Maggie. Yes. I, I think I failed on two counts because I don't think my band is British. Okay. Um, but I, I've gone for red hot chili peppers. Red hot chili peppers. Says Maggie. That is eighteen. Stuart, well, a music I feel frankly inadequate now because the only thing I could think of, and all I can hope is that Frankie Goes to Hollywood never won the Best British Group, was Coldplay. So Coldplay, eight letters in Coldplay. Tell you now, Red Hot Chili Peppers and Polyphonic Spree yeah. are incorrect answers. Yes, yeah. both American bands. Anyway, so it's a battle between Frankie Goes to Hollywood and Coldplay, which, by the way, I would buy. <laughs> so Richard, have you got the point? Is Frankie Goes to Hollywood a correct answer? It's not a correct <gasps> answer. Oh, my, oh my word, there is no doubt. They never won. Can you so believe British, it? And so, won. is Coldplay a correct answer? Yeah! It is a correct yeah. answer. No, well, I'd have rather got that one. Oh, okay. Four <laughs> times, Coldplay. Um, you will get two points if that's the longest possible answer. The longest possible answer is... Oh, Manic Street Preachers. Oh, so scored 20. That's a great answer. That's well done. Great, yeah. That terrific stuff. I'm well deserved. Next one. Can you write down the longest possible answer, please, in this category? Countries. 
beginning with S. As always by country, I'm in a sovereign state that's a member of the UN in its own right. Everyone in? I'm in. Excellent. Richard, we will start with you. Country in the world beginning with S? Solomon Islands. 14 Solomon Islands. That sounds pretty good to me. Maggie, what have you gone with? Uh, I'll say fairly local. OK. <laughs> I've gone for Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, oh that's, that's very good. Lovely. Yes, revealed. Switzerland. Lovely. Switzerland. 11. Mm, yeah. Let us Stuart. I'm there in the uh, beautiful Alps with Maggie, Switzerland. Switzerland as well. Lou? I went for Sardinia, then I didn't, and I went for that. Which one should I choose? Of Sardinia or South Africa? South Africa. Yes, you sure? Well, is it a country? <laughs> yes. Well, South Africa is a country, yes. yeah. Well, then, yes. And, <laughs> well, why are you looking at me like that? And That's Sardinia 11. isn't. Oh. So I would... <laughs> we don't normally let people do two and then... But I think it's fine. Is everyone, <laughs> yes. is everyone comfortable with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, let's take a look at South Africa. That is 11 as well. So, Solomon Islands, if that is a correct answer, Richard, you've taken a point. Is the Solomon Islands a correct answer? It is. Very well done. Well done. Point to the Reverend. But have you won two longest, points? Yes. Is the question. Is that the longest possible answer you could have given? Let's find out. The best answer you could possibly have given is... Oh! St Vincent and the Grenadines. St wow. Vincent and the Grenadines. 28 letters. Well done if you said that. I was thinking of like St Kitts and Nevis and all that. I'd forgotten mm. St Vincent and the Grenadines. St Vincent and the Grenadines. One last one in this round. Shakespeare tragedies. According to the Royal Shakespeare Company website, anything listed as one of Shakespeare's tragedies? Hmm. Hmm. OK, everyone is locked in. You're locked in at home. What do we think? The longest possible title of a Shakespeare tragedy. Maggie, we will start with you. What have you gone for? So I've gone for Henry V. Henry V, says Maggie. Let's put that up there. I'm not entirely sure how many words they were counted out. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was wondering. Yes, six. Ooh. Henry V. Okay. Stuart, what have you gone with? I wasn't sure whether. I've just thought now, it's probably a history. There's Pericles, Prince of Tyre, isn't there? I bet that's a history play. Anyway, I didn't go with it. I went rather boringly with The Merchant of Venice. Merchant of Venice. You say boring, it's quite long. That's long. And it's got a long title. It's a kind of cold place style answer. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's, you see what that did for yeah. you. Yeah. Merchant of Venice says Stuart. That has got 19 letters. Lou, what have you gone with? Um, someone might say it's a rom-com, but I say it's a tragedy because someone's yes. died. Well, a lot of people died. Oh, spoiler. <laughs> Sorry. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. says Lou. 14. Not too bad at all. Richard, what have you gone with? Anthony and Cleopatra. <gasps> oh. Oh, that's fair. Says Richard. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. 18. You would have thought Anthony and Cleopatra was longer than The Merchant of Venice. Yeah. There you go. Let's take a look. Is The Merchant of Venice a correct answer? Is it one of Shakespeare's tragedies? Oh, it's a comedy, I'm afraid. I mean, you'd be hard pushed. <laughs> it's a comedy. For the laughs. Mm. That's what my comedy is like. Ever during the Merchant of Venice. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> there you go. Antonin Cleopatra, is that one of Shakespeare's tragedies for a point? It is. Very well played. Very nicely done, Richard. Congratulations. You've got yourself a point. But have you got yourself two points? Let's take a look. What's the longest possible answer to this? <laughs> Anthony and Cleopatra or Tordis and Cressida. You get an extra point, Richard. Very well done. Uh, Romeo and Juliet was a correct answer. Henry V is one of the histories. Tap this away, please. That's the end of round four. We have one round to go. Let's take a look at the scores leading into our final round. They are... Lou and Maggie, you have three. Ooh. Stuart, you have seven, taking a little lead. Richard Coles with nine points. Very well done. <laughs> Without further ado, shall we? It is... Answer smash. Buzz in, give me a correct answer, you get a point. Buzz in, give me an incorrect answer, you will lose a point. There are two points between our two leaders. First category is buildings. Here's your first one. Which German word is used for a preschool nursery? That is Richard. Gerkindergarten. Gerkindergarten. 
is the right answer. Well done, the Gherkin and Kindergarten smack together. The Gherkin Kindergarten. Next building, next clue. What type of event did Noel Edmonds host from Crinkly Bottom in his 90s entertainment show? Yes, Stuart. Sydney Opera. Oh, I can't. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to lose. No. Sydney Opera House of Fun. Oh! oh that's such a shame. <laughs> I think we might have broken Lou. Maggie. Sydney Opera House Party. Sydney Opera House Party is the correct wow. answer. Oh, wow. <laughs> Next category is. Mathematical symbols. It's a good one for a scientist. I know, that's what, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> pictures will be mathematical symbols. There'll be clues underneath. Smash them together, please. Which song was a UK number one hit for Gloria Gaynor in 1979? Yes, Stuart. Pie will survive. Pie will survive. That's the right answer. Oh. Well done. It genuinely sounds like the title of one of your books. It does, doesn't, doesn't it? it? It'd be perfect. <laughs> you, can, you can have that. Thank you. Next symbol, next clue. Released in 1973, what was Bruce Lee's last completed film? Yes, Richard. Percent of the Dragon. Is it Percent of the Dragon? It is <laughs> Percent of the Dragon. Well done. Percent of into the Dragon. Next symbol, next clue. What song is played during the opening sequence of Train Spotting? Yes, Stuart. Plust for life. Plust for life, plus and lust for life. It is plus for life. Okay. Next category. <laughs> and category came there none. <laughs> we have reached the end of Tuesday's House of Games. Monday's House of Games was won by Stuart McConey. Has he won Tuesday's House of Games or has yeah. Richard Coles? held him off there in that final round. Let's take a look at our final scores on Tuesday's House of Games. Who has won? Richard Coles has won by three points. Well done, Richard. Congratulations. Means you take away a prize oh, as this, well. This gets better nice, and better. What of these would you like, Richard? There's the dartboard, there's the tie, there's a pillow and duvet set, the beer mats there, or those lovely salt and pepper shakers. I would like the salt and pepper shakers. Please. I don't blame you. I think they look good. <laughs> Richard Coles takes home the salt and pepper shakers. Very well done. <laughs> Let's take a look at what it's done to the weekly leaderboard. Here's how we stand after Tuesday. Maggie and Lou, you both have three. Richard and Stuart, you are dead level on seven. Still anybody's week. I'll see you here again tomorrow for Wednesday's show. We'll see you back here as well on the House of Games. I love the way you would never have a sense that someone had just put a sticker on an existing set of salt and pepper shakers. <laughs>